Good evening, everybody. And thank you again, uh, Pastor and Sister Tuttle, for having us down here. Um, what a great privilege. And wow, oh my goodness. I love the worship, um, the spirit that we feel here. Come on. I mean, you're talking about who needs camp meeting? You got the, when you got this at home, I mean, come on. Man, it's awesome. And I've had some great, great uh, experiences at camp as a child, but wow. Uh, the spirit that I feel here and just the freedom of worship and um, a truth teaching church. Uh, there are so many churches that are just going and oh my goodness, ec um, evangelistic churches, ecumenical churches headed right into um, this world religious system signing on with documents of justification with the world religious system. I watched that and I'm like, what, no, what are you guys thinking? And uh, things that their churches have held for hundreds of years. And they're just turning it back and saying, nah, you know, we're just, let's just all love each other and get along. I want to love each other and get along based on the truth. And I'm not, I can't, can't move off of the truth. Can't move off of the word of God. So, um, amen. So, when you've got a pastor, when you've got a pastor in face of all the peer pressure and things that pastors face, uh, when he will stand there and say, nah, nope, nope, we're going to stick with the word of God, nope, nope, then um, you better hold on to him and you better treat him right because I'm telling you, it's very, very, very important. So thank you for having us down here, um, Tuttle family, and we love you all, love this church, and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because we only signed up 125 Bible studies this morning. No, that's actually awesome, you guys. I'm just teasing. That's wonderful. That's fabulous. And 125 people in a Bible study. What normally happens is I might sign up 50 or 60 for a Bible study, and you might have 80 or 100 sign, show up because somebody will bring their uh, uh, an employee or uh, uh, you know their neighbor or somebody. You got to come to this end time Bible study. Well, if you guys signed up 125. I look forward to seeing how many show up to it. Uh, so very, very important. Okay, um, be seated. We're going to dive right off into tonight. Um, we've got a lot of things that are going to happen, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do it with a twist, okay? Uh, I talked to your pastor today, and he threw a curveball at me, and I almost, man, I, it was a good curveball. He's got a good one. So um, we'll see how it goes. Very quickly, who is here tonight that was not here this morning? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so everybody that has your hands raised, the guys back in the back are going to give you a magazine. They're going to give you one of these. So keep your hand raised until you get this magazine. It's going to happen very quickly. They're going to come down through there and give you these as I talk. But this is very, very important, okay? So when you get the magazine, in the magazine is an envelope like this. You'll see it right in the very center. And... I'm going to collect these envelopes here in just a little while, but at the very top of it, keep your hands up, and there's some right over here behind you, and there's some down through here. Keep your hands up till you get a magazine. Um, there's a place up at the top to partner with End Time, and we're really reaching around the world, um, teaching and preaching the gospel, the kingdom of God, because the end time is now, and we do that by Bible prophecy. Prophecy's the hook. Prophecy has got me indoors where if I'd have walked up and said, hey, let me teach you Acts 2.38, people would have said, click. I'm just being honest with you. But I, when I can come in with prophecy and then go to that, it has been very effective into the Jewish community, into many different places around the world, many different regions. People want to know what's going on in the world today. World government, what are you talking about? Mark of the beast, what's that all about? Well, when people are getting involved in that, it's got me onto television networks where I couldn't have got there, Acts 2.38. It's got me on radio programs. been on radio since 1998. And uh, God has really blessed that because of prophecy. But prophecy is the hook, like I say, where all of them are headed in one direction, and that's to the book of Acts. Okay? And so um, if you'd like to partner with us in that effort, with what we're doing in Israel in the end times and everything, um, there's a place up at the top to partner with us. Second, subscribe to End Time Magazine. To my knowledge, the most widely read prophecy magazine in the world, if you want to keep up to date. I told everybody this morning that all of the Congress, the government, the governors, every governor, Governor Abbott, everybody gets uh, In Time Magazine bi-monthly and has for the last 10 years. And so um, 
If you'd like to subscribe to End Time, there's a place to do that as well. Also, on the bottom left-hand side of the envelope, for those of you that just got a mag, there's a place to fill in all of your information. We'd like to get all that. We've got a giant database that we will never sell. I've had many people try to buy that database. Not going to happen. Uh, we, don't, we will never sell that. And um, there's a place on the bottom right-hand side, two red sentences. I'd like to receive End Times e-weekly newsletter update. Every Friday morning I get mine. Through the week, the staff puts together articles and videos and different things of things going on around the world. 2,000 years ago, John said that everybody would be given a number without which they will not be able to buy or sell. There are many precursors to that. Retinal scans, uh, fingerprints, uh, facial recognition photographs, central bank digital currencies. I mean, you name it. It's just crazy. Global numbering systems. I pulled up an article um, just today and... It says the International Monetary Fund is working on a global central bank digital currency platform. Well, if you know what a central bank digital currency platform is, they're trying to tie all of your bank accounts into a global central bank digital currency, and it's the International Monetary Fund, which is part of the world government. John prophesied about a world government 2,000 years ago, and he prophesied about a global numbering system that it would be an economic sanctioning system the Antichrist would use in the end time to get people to bow down to his edicts. And I'm watching, I, I'm re, I, I get tons of articles every day sent from people all over the world. And I get about, uh, from uh, Google Alerts, I probably get 50 or 75 different articles. I have guys that send me things on a consistent basis, 30 or 40 articles every morning pertaining to Bible prophecy and the fulfillment of it. And folks, we're way off into the end time. It is, and, and you'll see that by the end of the weekend. So... There's a place to subscribe to End Time Magazine there. There's a place, get your e-weekly newsletter, fill in your email, legible. The reason I say that is because I've had the ladies come screaming at me. I can't, you know, it's just like chicken scratch. They've got to be able to put it into the, into the computer, so make sure it's legible. And then finally, the last red sentence, I want to join an End Time Bible study. As you can tell, I'm blowing and going when I'm up here. I'm, cover, I'm skimming the surface of a lot of stuff. The Bible study slows way down. And it will drill way down into world government, modern nations in the Bible. Um, where's the United States mentioned in the Bible? What's the United States' role in the end time? What are we going to do in the end time? Are we going to be right along with the world government, the Antichrist squishing everybody like a bug? Or will we pull out of that world government and stand with Israel all the way to the end? I can prove scripturally that that's going to be the case. Did you know that? Okay, then you need to come to the Bible study because it proves all that stuff. It's very important. Uh, there is hope for the United States. You say, but yeah, we're, the United States is gone. No, the United States is not gone. There are some dastardly people doing some dastardly things, but the, United, the, the, the hope for the United States is not over. And so we're going to pull, we will pull out of that eventually. I thought it was going to be Donald Trump because of everything he was doing, but then Joe Biden got in and pushed us right back in. Donald Trump pulled us out of the Paris Climate Agreement, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Global Compact on Migration. I mean, one thing right after another, almost day one, Joe Biden got back in, right back in. The World Health Organization, Donald Trump pulled us back, pulled us out of, and we were in the process of that when he pushed us right back into it. Joe Biden did. So anyway, but all hope is not lost because God can turn things around on a dime. And so, but God. If, there, if I didn't have God, I would be, I'd be scared. I talked about fear this morning, but, but God. And because of God, um, it allows me to have hope in all of this stuff. You understand um, Daniel being put in the lion's den, he changed Darius. Darius said, nobody's going to worship anybody's God but Daniel's God. One night in the lion's den. So what miracle would it take for God to turn America around? He could do it overnight. So God, I'm telling you, God can turn around complete nations in one night with one miracle. That's the power of God. And that, that's really nothing for God. I mean, he could do that much by blinking, thinking about it. And so that's the God we serve, folks, and it's very important um, that we understand that. So I want to join the End Time Bible Study. The End Time Bible Study will start Thursday the 29th at 7 p.m. right here in the church. It's either probably start here the first one, and then depending on how many people show up, it looks like it'll stay here. But um, if, it's, if five people show up, you're probably going to have it in one of the nursery rooms or something. I don't know. But at any rate, um, it'll start right here the 29th, 7 p.m. That's correct, right, Pastor? Yes, okay, so sign up for that, and I'll collect the envelopes here in just a little bit. Now, breaking prophecy news. All right. 
You guys might recognize these guys. The first one, Pope Francis. Um, the second one, Net, Prime Minister Netanyahu of uh, Israel's Prime Minister. The third one, I, who is that guy? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, Joe Biden, okay. Come on, man. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Joe Biden, he is our president and I recognize him as that, but he's, he's doing some things that are, you know, not the best decisions, but we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. Uh, Joe Biden, um, the next guy is the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. And the last guy, obviously, Vladimir Putin. We talked about the bear this morning being modern-day nation of Russia. And all of these guys are involved in 2,000 to 2,500-year-old Bible prophecies as we speak, all five of them. And so we have to know about this stuff because, again, you need to know about it and your friends and family need to know about it because we're going to live through all of these prophecies. You say, whoa, 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 hold on. You're messing with my theology now, my eschatology beliefs that I've had since I was a child. Well, we're really going to mess with that here in a minute. Okay? We haven't even started yet. So, um, give, give me one slide there. Jesus said, and now I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. Prophecy, one of the main things prophecy does, yes, it does give us timelines and things to follow. All the way back from Zechariah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, all the way to Revelation 22, God give us a giant timeline of events to follow. And if we, as, so those are one of the reasons for prophecy, timeline and events. When's all this stuff going to come to pass? But also, it helps build your faith in the Word of God. And that's one of the main things that I use. I do go through the timelines. Tomorrow night's going to be one big giant timeline. You want to know what's coming in just the very near future, what's going on right now? I'm going to walk you through a giant timeline tomorrow night, uh, starting at 7 o'clock. We'll be right back here. And I've actually got a timeline you can take pictures of and take it home with you and keep it forever. And it's really cool. It walks you through everything that's got to happen between now, the second coming of Jesus Christ, all the way through the thousand-year millennial reign, the great white throne of judgment, and then off into eternity. I've got a timeline of events that you can follow. So we'll go through that tomorrow night. Now, really quick, <clears throat> the six major prophecies that will soon come to pass. Upon this big giant timeline, that God gave us the next two events on that timeline the next two now there are so there's two different types of prophecy <clears throat> there's ongoing the ongoing establishment of a world government the ongoing estab establishment of a world religion okay we're watching the ongoing they're, they're just the, the world government was established the current efforts towards a new world order back in 1945 with the um, United Nations Charter was signed in San Francisco and so, but that's an ongoing fulfillment. It's been going on for decades now, the ongoing fulfillment of a world government. But there are some that are once and done. The tearing down of the Berlin Wall, that was, a, that was prophesied in the Bible. It's a healing of the deadly wound. That was, when that happened, it was over with. That prophecy's done. And so there are ongoing fulfillments, and there are once and done. And so the um, Chernobyl nuclear accident was another one, April 26, 1986. That was, the, that was Wormwood in Revelation chapter 8, the third trumpet and the, by a star called Wormwood. And, and we may, we'll t I think we'll talk about that tomorrow night, but Chernobyl, that's already, uh, that's once and done, okay? But then there are ongoing ones. So the next two on God's prophetic timeline is number one, a war, World War III. We are coming up. Uh, World War III, they're talking about it all the time in the news. They're talking about, so I'm in local, national, and international news all day long, every day. I live in that world. And they're talking more about World War III right now than they ever have in my lifetime. I'll be 55 in August. And I've never seen articles like I've seen. I mean, they're talking about World War III and nuclear war like it's just rolling off people's tongues. And, I, and many people believe we're already in World War III. In the Middle East, it just hasn't escalated to the point where we would have mass casualties. World War I was just over 8 million killed. World War II was just over 52 million killed. World War III is going to be one-third of the world's population. One-third. That would be, we just reached 8 billion in uh, November, or in November according to the United Nations. Eight billion population on the earth. This would be two points, what? 2.666, 2.7 billion. 
killed in this next war that's coming. And they're talking about world war. It's just, it's just rolling off of their tongue. And I don't take this lightly. I don't like talking about these kind of prophecies. I'll just be honest with you. I wish we could talk about the coming kingdom of God and, you know, and, and just focus on that. But this stuff's in here for a reason. God did not want us to go through the end time blindfolded. He wanted us to know what was coming. So World War III is coming. Um, and I say, I don't know if I'll have time to get to it tonight, but I can, I can prove to you why it's the next one. The first five trumpets, this is another thing we'll have to talk about. We may cover this some tomorrow night, but the first, that you have the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven vials in the book of Revelation. The first four seals have already been opened. But a lot of people teach that that has to happen during the final seven years. There's no scriptures for that. And you'll find out that I'm just kind of blunt. I'll just, well, I'll tell you. I can back it up by scripture, but I'm just kind of blunt. That's just how we roll on radio and television. So the, 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 the seals, trumpets, and vials don't happen during the final seven years. Some of them will, but some of them have already been opened. The first one, the first seal, the, the uh, Catholicism, the white spirit in the earth, that was opened all the way back in 300, 325 A.D.-ish when the Catholic Church was formed. And so those things have been uh, coming, the... Um, the Red Spirit, Communism, Socialism, that was opened. Uh, Karl Marx wrote his Communist Manifesto, what was it, 1850. So we're moving right along here, right? But the seals have been being opened. And so the first five trumpets have already occurred of the seven trumpets, the first five. World War I, first trumpet. World War II, the second trumpet. World, uh, Chernobyl nuclear accident, trumpet number three. The speeding up of time with the tearing down of the Berlin Wall in 1989, the process of globalization. The fifth trumpet was the Iraq war with Saddam Hussein. Now, if you come to the Bible study, it's going to walk you through that and explain all that in great detail. Again, I won't have time to do that tonight. But there you go. Uh, so saved by the bell, right? So World War III is going to happen. That's the, one of the next two things. The other thing is a peace agreement that will begin the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ, a peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Jesus talked about when you see the abomination of desolation occur, let them which be in Judea flee. Well, Judea is the modern-day West Bank. And so if you're standing on the Mount of Olives, every, we just come back from Israel a few weeks ago, you got the Temple Mount on your back, you got the Kidron Valley, you got the Mount of Olives right here. When we're standing there teaching, I ask them, where's, the, where's Judea, where's the West Bank? I don't know. It's right over this hill. That all the way to the, to, to the country of Jordan is the West Bank, the, the Judea-Samaria area. Many of you would recognize that scripturally. Well, the Bible says there's, Jesus said, warned them to flee. So he's warning of an autonomous situation that's going to be there with the Palestinians because he's talking about modern-day situation. There's nobody else on the planet vying for that area than the Palestinians right now. China doesn't want that area. But the Palestinians do. They're willing to kill for it. And they have done that. So Jesus was warning about that. There's going to be a situation in Judea that when you see the Antichrist stand in a rebuilt Jewish temple, you guys in Judea, you're going to have to flee. And so when you go back to Daniel 9.27, again, there's no way I'm going to have time to go through all this in great detail, but the peace agreements mentioned in Daniel 9. It's actually Daniel 9, 24 through 27, a 490-year prophecy. But when he gets to Daniel 9, 27, he says, And he, talking about the Antichrist, will confirm the covenant with many for a seven-year period, a week. It's a week of years. And so it's going to be an interim agreement that will be signed between the Israelis and the Palestinians. They have been trying that for years. Many people. There's been many of them. There's been the Y River Accords, the, the Oslo Peace Accords. There's been um, the Camp David Accords. They've been trying for this agreement. Most people believe that that is the main conflict in all of the Middle East. Even though Iran is the number one state sponsor of terrorism on the planet, they see is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict as the number one conflict in the Middle East. And so the international community, everybody's involved in that. Why are the eyes of the world always on Israel? Because God said 37 times in the Old Testament, I will put my name there. And, and, and Satan's been fighting for it ever since. There have been 40 major wars fought over the nation, over the city of Jerusalem. Not the nation of Israel, the city of Jerusalem over time. More than any other city on the planet. Why? Because Satan's been fighting God for it ever since. And the final battle on earth, the battle of Armageddon, will be fought over Jerusalem and that 35 acres called the Temple Mount. And so... 
That's the next two things. The six trumpet war, and you say, which one first? In my opinion, and this is opinion because the Bible doesn't tell us which one happens first. It would probably be World War III. And then the international community, that's going to be the entrance ramp for the Antichrist. The international community would look at Israel and Palestine and say, you guys are going to sign a peace agreement whether you want to or not. The Bible says the Antichrist will confirm a covenant with many for a seven-year period. So in my opinion, and this is a very educated opinion, that, that would be, it would be World War III first, then the peace agreement would get signed. It could happen opposite because I can't prove it scripturally, but if you look at history and different things that are happening right now, the, the ge really the geopolitical situation in the Middle East it looks like the war will happen first and if we haven't started it already it could happen at any time a lot of people said um, Russia and uh, Ukraine could be World War III I don't believe that China and Taiwan could be I don't believe that because those things could tie into World War III but the Bible says loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates for to kill a third part of mankind so Euphrates is Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. And so um, that's where I look to uh, it starting. And, and we'll talk more about that um, tomorrow night. The, the next thing, the United Nations is going to continue its drive to becoming a world government. And the United Nations from its inception was established to be a socialistic or a communistic one world governing body. I don't have, again, I don't, the, the Bible study, that's why it's so important you come to the Bible study, but there, the, the guy who wrote the charter for the United Nations was a communist spy. He was undercover. He was working right along FDR. FDR was a dying man. They gave this guy a commission to be the architect of the United Nations charter, and he was, a, he was an undercover communist spy. His name was Alger Hiss. He was the architect of the charter. He wrote it. He got it all put together, him and his team, they got it signed. He was the first acting secretary general of the United Nations. You will never see his name published or a picture of him in the United Nations. I've been there many times. They don't tell you. You ask him, who's Alger Hiss? Uh, I don't know. Well, he was your first acting secretary general. They don't want to talk about him because he was a communist spy. Not one word of that charter has ever changed. The United Nations was created from its inception to be a communistic one world governing body. And it still operates as that today. So all of the propaganda, human-induced global warming, which leads to climate change. You're, you guys are burning up the earth because of your, uh, your oil plants and your SUVs that you drive, your big pickup trucks, and the coal-fired power plants. The humans are causing this. But there's no truth to it. It's a complete hoax. But, amen. It's, that, that, when Joe Biden, when me and my father-in-law were watching the debate when uh, Joe Biden said we need to move off of the oil and gas industry. And I looked, me and my father looked and said, well, he just lost the election. But he got in, didn't he? Because there established, there's an establishment that wanted him in. And so I know talking about the oil and gas industry, I know where I'm at talking about the oil and gas industry, okay? I'm pro oil and gas industry. Okay, so everybody relax, okay? I know, I know right where I'm at. And uh, I, I love the oil and gas industry. I have a pickup truck too. And so I'm, I'm all into oil and gas. Come on, keep it, keep the coal-fired power plants. They, they, they want to move us on to um, the wind turbines and these big wind things. Yeah, and nobody saw that freeze up over the winter, did we? Okay, I'll move on. You guys are going to tar and feather me on the way out of here. But it's a complete, it's a complete hoax. That's the United Nations. Um, so the establishment of a global religious system. These are the six things we should be watching for. The mark of the beast. This is, oh, one more, there we go. Mark of the Beast, central bank digital currencies, something that's going on right now. Um, the central bank in the United States is part of a cabal of private bankers. It has nothing to do with the Federal Reserve or nothing to do with the, the government, the United States government. It is a, it's owned by a cabal of private bankers that control the United States. Originally, our Congress was supposed to have the power to set interest rates and control uh, what the dollar was worth. But the, the Federal Reserve Act that they got passed by a horrible situation years ago back in uh, 1913 gave, took the power away from our Congress to print, uh, control the amount of money in circulation, how much it was worth, the interest rates. How many, how, when's the last time anybody in here ever heard that the Congress was getting ready to raise the interest rates? Has anybody ever heard that? No. Nobody in here unless you're super, super old. But simply not the case but how many of you have has said well the fed's getting ready to raise the interest rates three quarters of a point or something you all have heard that 
because the Federal Reserve now has the power that was given to Congress in our Constitution. And it's a cabal of private bankers. Well, there's central banks in every developed nation on the planet, and they're trying to get a central bank digital currency. They want to have control over a digital currency. Move off of the dollar, because dollar is freedom. If I give you $10, and you can go buy gum, you can go buy whatever you want to with it. And I, I don't have any control over that. It is galling the world government and these central bankers around the world. They want to have control over everything you do. So if we move to digital, the central bank digital currencies are, are programmable. And they can, if they don't want you to buy a gas stove, they can program the central bank digital currencies. Nope, you can't buy a gas stove with this money. Invalid purchase. And, that's what, and so now they're trying to, when I said that the International Monetary Fund is looking to create a global central bank digital currency, always remember this, the Bank for International Settlements. That's the central bank. That's the hub. That's the mama bank of all the central banks around the world. Israel has a central bank. Every developed country. And the Bank for International Settlements is how the globalists are running the world. The three things globalists need to run the world. They need a world government. They need the world religions on board. And they need a global economic system. All of that's being established as we speak. Actually, it's been being set up for decades. Revelation 13, John prophesied that there would be a world government, the Antichrist would lead that, there would be a world religion, the false prophet would lead that, and there would be an economic sanctioning system that we would refer to as the mark of the beast. John prophesied exactly what we're seeing being set in place right now. And so, mark of the beast. And then finally, these things are happening right now, you understand, in 2023. If you guys aren't following this, you need to. I'm t it's very, very critical. Finally, number six. <clears throat> Great end time revival. You say, well, the, great, the best time of revival the world's ever seen was back in the book of Acts. No, no, no. The greatest time of the revival the world's ever seen is ahead of us now. You say, well, prove that scripturally. I'm glad you told me to do that. Because in Revelation chapter 7, <clears throat> it's the revival chapter. John is given a vision in Revelation chapter uh, 7, verse 1 through 8, of the 144,000. 12,000 out of each tribe of Israel. It's a remnant of Jews that will be saved in the end time. But the end time church will be a Jewish Gentile church mixed, just like the original church. You understand there was a church in Rome, right? It was the book of Romans is written to the church in Rome. There were, there were Jews and Gentiles in the original church. There's going to be Jews and Gentiles in the end time church. So that's a remnant of Jews, the 144,000. And then John in Revelation 7, 9, he says, I turn and look and behold, a multitude no man could number out of every kindred, people, tongue, and nation. And the elder looks at John and said, Who's are the, who are these guys that have white robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb? And John says, I don't know, thou knowest. And the elder says, these are they that came out of great tribulation. Now in the book of Acts, they could number. There was 3,000 saved. There was 5,000 saved. They could number them. But John said, I saw a multitude no man could number that came out of the great tribulation that stood in heaven one day out of every kindred, people, tongue, and nation. So the greatest time of revival the world's ever seen is ahead of us, folks. That's why I wanted to talk to you today about moving off of fear and into evangelism mode. This church could be twice the size it is, you understand. There's enough people here. There's a whole lot more people out there than sitting in here tonight. So everybody here, if you won one soul next year, you guys are going to have to have parking lot tent stuff or something. pastor's going to have a problem on his hand. Right. Amen. So... The greatest time of revival the world's ever seen is ahead of us now. So I want to jump forward to a, a, um, a slide. If you guys can help me, go to slide 11. Pull that up. There you go. Okay. Now, there's going to be a lot better uh, one than this, a more detailed uh, chart than this tomorrow night. But a lot of people want to know, when will the rapture happen? You guys are always talking about this stuff. When does the rapture happen? Okay. Well, I believe that we can prove the rapture happens immediately after the tribulation, not before. Okay? And you have the, the, the Middle East Peace Treaty. It starts the final seven years. There is a final seven-year period, but the Great Tribulation, look in the black part right there. The Great Tribulation only lasts the final three and one-half years of that. And so there is a final seven-year period, Daniel's 70th week, then many things happen. The temple's built. The animal sacrifices are resumed. A third, that's built during the first three and one half years. And then many things happen in the middle. 
there's a war in heaven Satan is confined to the earth there's an abomination of desolation <clears throat> the antichrist is revealed the false prophet supports the antichrist and the bible study is going to walk you through all this that's why I want you to sign up for the bible study it's very very critical then the great tribulation begins at the halfway mark the two witnesses begin their ministry and then for three and a half years the antichrist doles out the mark of the beast then at the very end the Middle East treat, peace treaty expires that's when the nations will come down against Israel to battle that's when the rapture and the second coming occurs the Jews meet the Messiah the Antichrist and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire and Satan is thrown in the bottomless pit then we start the 1000 year millennial reign now I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this tomorrow night however the rapture happens at the end of this final seven year period now what I thought I might do is because I know that I just messed with some people's theology in here in your eschatology. Hold on a minute. I've always been taught a pre-trib rapture or a mid-trib. So there's really no thing. If you look at this, there's no, thing, there's no such thing really as a mid-trib rapture. People that believe in a mid-trib believe the, the, the tribulation is going to be seven years. The Great Tribulation, every time it talks about the Great Tribulation in the Bible, it talks about 1,260 days, uh, 42 months, time, times, and half a times. It's all a three-and-a-half-year span. There is a final seven-year period, but the Great Tribulation only lasts the final three and one-half years of that. So um, a lot of people get, it's, it's kind of like a misinterpretation of the, of the Great Tribulation. So um, with that said, any, any questions on that? Just raise your hand if you've got a question on pre-post-trib. Okay, well, um, I, thought there, I thought the hands would fly up. So everybody in here believes in a post-trib, right? Say no or yes. Okay, I heard some no's. Okay. Well, I, I know that it is a traditional teaching um, in the, that, that, that there's a pre-trib. My father-in-law's mom and dad, brother and sister Baxter Sr., always taught him a pre-trib rapture because that's what they were always taught. And then when my father-in-law came along, he started reading some specific scriptures and I'm going to read you those scriptures and he said you know he said I know my mom and dad and he'd, he'd ask his mom and dad and they'd say well you know um, Irv I, I, I can't answer those but ask so and so when he comes to preach he's coming to preach next month they'd have uh, evangelists come through the church all the time and he would say they, when he'd get there they'd stay up at late night and eating pizza and playing games and he'd ask them these questions and they'd say well I don't know but you need to call so and so and so they'd call him and he'd say well I, I don't know but so and so teaches this and call him so my father-in-law said you know I never had anybody answer my questions on these certain scriptures and so he started believing and teaching in a post tribulation rapture that we would go through all this this is why the bible study is very critical and so let me read you a few of these scriptures and then if you got any questions we can talk about it because we're going to the word of God I don't want to give you my opinion because I know this is a big deal but remember, in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus, uh, they asked, they brought him out on the Mount of Olives. They come, the disciples come to it privately, and they said, Lord, tell us, what's going to be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? We talked about the end of the age this morning. Not the end of the world after the, the great white throne, but after the end of the age. And he goes immediately into, take heed that no man deceives you. Many will come in my name and deceive you. And he goes into talking about, you're going to see of wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places. You guys have read all that. And then um, when he gets to verse 29, now, when he gets to verse 29, remember, he's talking to us here. He's talking about things that would occur at the end of the age when he comes back. Not to them. Because remember in Acts 1, they asked him, well, you at this time restore your kingdom? He said, it's not for you guys to know. But remember, I, this morning, I proved to you that we can understand the prophecies told in the book of Daniel. Nope, close up and seal this book. It's for the people of the time of the end. The apostles did not know the prophecies. Now, I know that Jesus said, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Matthew 24. But knoweth is the present tense form of know. So they couldn't know. You say, well, are, are you giving a date? Nope. Because I don't know the day or the hour either. But the thing is, we can know the seasons. Absolutely. And so when we look at this stuff, you've got to understand you got to tie all the verses into a topic if you're going to study it in the Bible. I don't care if it's the oneness of God, if it's salvation, you better study every verse that pertains to that topic because just when you think you got it all figured out, 
you'll have a conversation with somebody and they'll say well what about this verse and they're like oh I didn't even figure on that one and then and then you got to go back to the drawing board right so when we go to um, Matthew chapter 24 remember it's the Olivet Discourse Jesus is describing things that will occur at the end of the stage and he says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened moon shall not give her light stars shall fall from heaven the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other that's the rapture when did Jesus say that would happen in verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days now he had just talked about the great tribulation in verse 21 he said let them which you when you see the abomination of desolation occur let them which be in Judea flee for in verse 21 for then will be great tribulation such as never went been before or ever will begin tribulation or a time of persecution a great time of persecution we've had the Spanish Inquisition you've had the Holocaust there's been many things of horrible persecution but Jesus said what's coming is going to be worse than that but then he goes right down there a few verses later and he says immediately after the tribulation of those days the thing I just prophesied about that's when you're going to see the, the sun will be dark and moon shall not give her light stars will fall from heaven and then he shall send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet to gather his elect that's the last trump and that's when he's going to gather to his elect that only happens one time in the future Jesus said that would happen immediately after the tribulation now my father-in-law Irvin Baxter started asking his mom and dad these things what about this thing and they're like well Irv you know I don't know you're going to have to ask because his mom and dad were really kind of like um, meat and potatoes type preacher they it wasn't really uh, Bible scholars let's say so they couldn't answer his questions so he started asking everybody to get his hands on and a lot of guys told him Irv man just if you want to study prophecy get Clarence Larkin's book Dispensational Truth That'll, you get it all figured out well he got that book and he didn't figure it all out from the book so he thought man what am I, 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 I nobody can answer my questions well then he went to another scripture this is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and he said the apostle Paul was teaching here because you understand at this point there were many people teaching the doctrine of imminency that the Lord could come at any time there were no more prophecies to be fulfilled the Lord could come at any time and he's like the apostle Paul said whoa 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 hold on we don't believe in the doctrine of imminency he taught the apostle Paul taught against the doctrine of imminency and he says now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him one continuous event he didn't say that there would be seven years between the rapture and the second coming he said now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him the rapture that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ he calls the coming of our Lord and our gathering together unto him the day of Christ the day not the days separated by seven years he calls it the day of Christ is at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day he calls it that day a second time there that day shall not come except there come a falling away first which is the dark ages I can prove that and the, um, there comes a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition that's the antichrist now, you, now you, whoa, 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 stop the presses the apostle Paul is telling us that the second coming of Jesus Christ and the rapture is not going to occur until the antichrist is revealed so he says let, um, who, uh, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself all that is called God or that is worship so that he is God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God that's the abomination of desolation so the apostle Paul said the antichrist is not going to be revealed don't be mistaken by anybody Jesus Christ his second coming and his rapture will not occur until after the antichrist is revealed okay now that's the second one my father-in-law was posing these questions to his mother and dad and who, who died pre-trib, but they're both in heaven. So it's not a salvation issue, so everybody relax. Everybody said no. It's not, a, it's not a salvation issue. We do not teach it as a salvation issue. You can believe whatever you want. I'm just, telling, I'm just showing you a few scriptures. Okay? And then, um, that's the second one. None of the, none of the uh, people that my father-in-law talked to couldn't, could answer that question either what the Bible says right here well then you go to Revelation chapter 20 this is the third one I'll give you 
and then I'll we'll take I will do Q and A if you want. Okay. If you go to Revelation chapter twenty verse four, John said, "Well, I saw." He's seeing a future vision of heaven. He said, "And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image." neither received his mark in their forehead or in their, uh, in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So they were during the great tribulation. That's when the mark of the beast is going to be doled out. John said, during this time, I saw people that were in heaven that did not worship the beast or the antichrist during that last three and one half year period. And he says, they lived and, they, um, they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead, the, the sinners, the unsaved individuals, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. So if you come right down here, the 1,000 year reign you see uh, on earth begins after that. John said, I saw people that were raptured here and the rest of the dead, they live not again until the great white throne of judgment. John says that this is, the, in verse five, this is the first resurrection. The first resurrection happened after all these people had been through the great tribulation. The first resurrection happened right there at the very end. Well, then he says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, in the rapture. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ um, and shall reign with him for a thousand years. They'll reign with him. Th those of you that are raptured here, which is just about probably everybody sitting here, I hope, you w we will be changed from mortal to immortal and we will be reign has him with kings and priests for that 1,000 year millennial reign here on the earth that's why I said this morning somebody could be mayor of Vider uh, if you don't like your mayor right now and how he paints the streets and do all whatever you can, you can have that job in the, in the millennium okay so we're going to rule and reign with him as kings and priests I don't know if you'll do that or not I'm just kidding but the first resurrection happens after people have come through the great tribulation and had to deal with the mark of the beast Okay, so these are three scriptures. The first resurrection happens after that. I, my father-in-law was on TV with Perry Stone, and he read him the scripture because what happened is my, my brother Baxter went out to be on Paul Crouch's uh, TVM program. Paul Crouch figured out that my father-in-law be, believed in a post-trib rapture, and he had Perry Stone, Jack Van Impe, Tim LaHaye, John Hagee. He had everybody, everybody who's who's who in the prophecy world on TV, he had them all out on the program with my father-in-law trying to prove him wrong. All you guys, Tim LaHaye, you wrote the Left Behind series. Come in and prove Irvin wrong. Well, Brother Baxter would go on there with no Bible, no notes, and just quote the stuff. And the, the, everybody else was flipping through pages and going through books, and they, they're trying to figure stuff in mind. And Paul Crouch, he figured out, he, told, he called my father-in-law, and he said, Irvin, he said... I have had, in 45 years of doing TBN, I've had everybody you can dream of on my program. And I thought I had it figured out, but I can't get past your scriptures on this post-trib rapture. He said, I've, I've been pre-trib my entire life. But he said, the way you bring them out and the way you teach them, he said, now I've got, you guys, I gave you three. I can give you a plethora of scriptures. But he said, I, I, can't, I can't figure out how you, how you I, I, don't, I can't get past your scriptures. And so... My father-in-law said, well, Paul, he said, I was born and raised pre-trib. And he said, once we got, uh, once I got older and started studying this stuff, I simply, because Brother Baxter had a very um, engineering type mind, a very inquiring mind, and uh, had got a fabulous education. And so he started, uh, but he had a very inquiring mind. He wanted to know. If, he just, if you tell him something, he didn't want to just say, well, that sounds great. He's like, well, why do you believe that? Who told you? Where'd you get this? What book did you read? I mean, it was just Brother Baxter. Well, when he got to this, he thought, man, I know most of my friends and family and everybody and all my preacher friends. He, had, he knew everybody. He said, they all believe in a pre-trib. But he said, I, what about these scriptures? And he started asking everybody, and nobody could answer his questions. So he thought, you know what? In the face of all the peer pressure, I've just come to the realization that the church is going to go through the tribulation. So... That's what happened, and so what I tried to do, I tried to prove him wrong. Because I thought, man, if I'm going to believe this stuff and teach this stuff, I want to make sure I know what I believe. So I went through and I studied, 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 and I thought, man, he, that's, I can't prove him wrong. And not because he was my father-in-law, uh, because we had great conversations, but 
uh, I just had to come to the realization. Now, I will tell you, if for some, somehow or another, you got the, 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 the pre-trib's right, and we were wrong. While we're, when we're on our way up, I'll look over and say, look, I know I was wrong, but hey, we made it anyway. <laughs> but uh, I don't think, I don't see that in Scripture. I think, um, you know, I, 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 I honestly don't, who's, who is just dying to go through the tribulation? Not me. I'm not saying, yeehaw, I get to go through it. But I can't, I can't overlook these Scriptures. There's many of them. We could go through the simultaneous harvest. We could do a lot of different things. Talk about the structure of the book of Revelation and the segmentation of it and the whole um, how many times the wrath are here and the difference in the wrath of Satan and the wrath of God and all that. The, the great tribulation, by the way, is the wrath of Satan. That's not the wrath of God, by the way, if you're trying to figure all this stuff out. The great tribulation is the wrath of Satan. Read Revelation 12 when it talks about the war in heaven. Satan is defeated by Michael and his angels and he's bound to the earth. Satan has access to the earth right now, to heaven right now. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Remember in the book of Job, you say, well, no, 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 in the garden of Eden he was cast out. No, no, hold on a second. He was, um, in the book of Job, chapter 1, the Bible says the, the, the sons of God appeared before God to give an account, and the devil, Satan, was with them. He had access to heaven, right? That's when the Lord said, well, have you considered my servant Job? The Bible says today, read Revelation chapter 12. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's up there saying right now, Dave Robbins does not deserve, look at all the dastardly deeds he's done throughout his life. He doesn't deserve to go to heaven. And God's saying, no, all I see is my blood covering him. I don't really see any of his sins. And so the fact of the matter is, Satan's still there. But there's coming a time when he's going to be bound to the earth. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, rejoice you there in heaven. Satan lost the battle. It's his last effort to overthrow God. And he's in heaven and he's bound to the earth the Bible says woe to the inhabitants of the earth this is Revelation 12 but um, rejoice you there in heaven but woe to the inhabitants of the earth because Satan comes down into you having great wrath and he persecutes the woman with 12 stars around her head in Revelation 12 for three and a half years that's Israel and then he pers the Bible says in Revelation 12 read this really closely and he also goes after and persecutes those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ that's not Israel who has the testimony of Jesus Christ in the earth today? We do. It's the church. And so the Bible tells us specifically, the great tribulation will be the wrath of Satan. God's wrath is, go over to Revelation chapter 16, the, the seven vials of the wrath of God. Big difference in that. The seven vials of the wrath of God happen at the very end of the great, end of the final seven years. Uh, the way I know that is because the first vial is poured out upon those who receive the mark of the beast during the great tribulation period. So it can't happen until the very end. Um, so two different, two different events, Satan's wrath, God's wrath. If you understand that the great tribulation is Satan's wrath, then you can get the post-trib view, okay? Very, very important. There, but again, there's, there's a plethora of ways um, to figure this stuff out. Again, man, we got to wrap this up at 615, right? Um, is there is any questions on that so far? Yes, no? So when you ask somebody for questions, you either explained it so good that everybody gets it, or you've bewildered everybody so much they don't know what to ask. <laughs> and so what we could do, though, is tomorrow night's going to be a great time of Q&A. We'll have a lot more time. And um, if you want to say, what was it? Oh, uh, Yes. Who, who could asked that? Be saved if they take oh, the could somebody be saved? Okay, so did you tell them our conversation this afternoon? Come on, man. So what happens is my initial response was no. The Bible prophesies that there's of eternal consequence if somebody takes the mark of the beast. However, your, your pastor posed a question to me, and I said, you know, um, there may be a way that if somebody takes it, and then let's say somebody in this church witnesses to somebody here in Biter that took it and wants to, they say, oh my goodness, I took it. The, the chips that, that people are putting in their hands, even here in the United States, it's like a fad now. They can do a Bluetooth and open a car door and all this other stuff. You can have those things removed. I know that. And uh, because I've got, I saw a video where a guy put one in his hand and then he, he pushed the thing back out of the same hole where he had it put in. So you can have them removed. Could somebody repent and say, oh my gosh, I made a mistake 
and be saved. Well, I've got to I've got to consider that and say, you know what? There's a possibility they may be able to. Now, after the rapture happens, you're going to have a problem. So, I certainly would not do that, but I can't say 100% no. I can't because the Bible does say anybody who takes that will be lost. But the Bible also says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. So if that's the case, can a liar be saved? Well, I know they can because I've told lies in my life and I'm saved. So I got to look at it. I just thought about that right now. You're putting stuff in my head. I, I, I wonder why you brought me down here. You're trying to convert me on something, ain't you? But the, fa <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that I can't say no. Past the rapture, they're going to have a... I, I would not want to face God at the rapture having done that. However, if, it, if we're just entered into the great tribulation and somebody does it and then somebody witnesses to them and say, oh my, I, I didn't know about this. I made a mistake. It's, uh, I believe they probably could. Okay? Because the mercies of God will reach way out there and get you. There's really nothing beyond the mercies of God. Let's just be honest. There's another question. So, uh, yes. Right here. Okay. Can you get her a mic? Because I can barely hear her. Or somebody got a mic somewhere? He's got a mic right here. If you, because I want everybody in here to hear this, and I've got to be able to hear it, and I can barely hear you because I'm losing my hearing. There you go. All right. What you got? This is a question that I've been wanting answered for a long time. Because mm -hmm. I knew that the internet was part of the mark. Now he says that the only way that you're going to buy and sell is through the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do to not receive that mark? Are we going to be protected? Are we going to be vigilant? Or what's, what's the best thing for us yeah. as individuals not to receive that mark? Sure. So, number one, uh, we're going to have to trust God, number one. That's why you better learn how to do that now. That's the absolute best re the answer I could give you, number one. There are some things. Um, so you'll learn this in the first and second Bible study. But the modern nations in the Bible, the United States is part of that. Um, there's a lion with eagle's wings, bear, four-headed leopard, and a ten-horned beast. Those four nations, which is um, Great Britain, the United States, uh, Russia, Germany, and the current European Union, go to John. All those nations have federalized. The Bible says it has the body of the leopard, Germany, the feet of the bear, Russia, the mouth of the lion, uh, Great Britain, and the ten horns of the ten horn kingdom, the current European Union. They've all federalized into a one world governing body. But the eagle's wings are not mentioned there. Well, what happens? So the United Nations, not going to be part of this. The, oh, I'm sorry, the United States. Whoa, my holy macaroni. Woo, you guys are scaring me to death, man. Come on. Holy, do you guys plan that? Ugh. My heart just went right up here and come right back down on my chest. <laughs> oh. oh, don't do that to me. Okay, so I got to take a breather after that one. So the, the thing is, is that, because this is getting a little tense, isn't it? Wait till tomorrow night. It'll get real fun. So the, the United States is not mentioned in that. If you jump back one chapter, what happened to the United States? Well, when the war in heaven happens and Satan comes down right here at the three and a half year point, the Bible says that in Revelation 12, 14, that Israel, is, the woman, is carried away on the wings of a great eagle where she is nursed in her place for time, times, and half a time. When we move into Bible prophecy, the eagle represents a nation. Remember, it's the United States of America. So according to Scripture, we have pulled out of the world governing body and are standing, standing against Israel. The Bible says that the eagle will protect Israel uh, the, United, the Israel against the dragon which is the world governing body and so we have been Israel's greatest ally for since she was established in 1948 and we protected her with our UN Security Council veto power over 40 times since the 70s because the United Nations is constantly pushing resolutions anti-Israel resolutions anti-Semitic resolutions against Israel so we've used our UN Security Council to block those resolutions and protect Israel we're our greatest ally on the planet so it appears that the United States will not be in full compliance with the world governing body in the end time and that we may not face as much of the mark of the beast here 
as other nations who are in full compliance. So, uh, <laughs> Brother has, has yeah. a question, but I did have one before that. Go. Um, is Nancy Pelosi the Antichrist? <laughs> Nancy. Oh, man. Now I know why this church is like it is right there. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's a fabulous church. Um, and, and if it's not, do you think the Antichrist is alive? Yes. And who uh, is she? No, okay. <laughs> oh, man. This thing went south quick right there. Um, so the Antichrist is a he, by the way. Uh, the Bible calls him the man of sin, the son of perdition. Um, do, do, Nancy Pelosi, I, uh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. The, um, I don't think, she, obviously, she would be the Antichrist. However, I, be, I do believe the Antichrist is certainly alive. All of the, there, so my father-in-law passed away in November of 2020. And there are so many things that are happening now that were not happening two years and seven months ago. It's, things are happening like this, guys. The stuff's all converging at the same time. For the Antichrist not to be alive, that's, that's just not possible. It's not. Unless God just strings this thing out for another 100 years, and I don't see that. Because all the things that are all the things on this big giant timeline, this is only a real short timeline. That's the stuff that's left before the second coming. There's a giant timeline all the way back to 300 A.D., and even to the coming of Messiah the first time. And this is all that's left before the second coming. Just those little things right there. That's it. And well, tomorrow night I'll show you where the world government and different things lay on this. But I mean, that's all beyond the, beyond the world government, world religion. Um, that's it. That's all I could add to that. So the Antichrist being on earth right now, there are so many things. Me and my father-in-law and I never had a conversation about central bank digital currencies. But look how prominent they are. There are also... There's going to be a global numbering system in the end time. There is also the um, United Nations effort to number every single person on the planet. It's called uh, ID2020. The World Bank has ID4D. They're both efforts by the world government to number every single person on the planet. It's in the Sustainable Development Goals, which is the socialistic blueprint of the United Nations to govern every single person in here. They want to be able to say how much electricity you can use, how many times you can flush your commode, how much water you can use, how much gas you can use in your vehicle, or if you can have a gas vehicle. They want to be able to dictate everything. And so we have currently in the office a president who wants, you, wants that to happen. And when, that's why Donald Trump, they can't have him get in there. Again, throw the Republican Democrat out. What's happening in America is they're trying to crucify Donald Trump because the globalists cannot have him get back in there. Because if he gets in there, you talk about destroying what they did first time, he was just pulling us out. Now he really knows what's going on. Uh, we have a guy, I know people who are very close to him, a guy that's working in our building right now, starting another network. Uh, he's in a business with Don Trump Jr. And so I am hope I would love to, at some point to have access to Don, Donald Trump and say, look, he understands everything from a secular mindset, this world government. If he understood Bible prophecy and what was coming, he would have. we might have just pushed the United Nations off in the river up there in New York you understand the head of the United Nations is in New York it's not on Europe and so they can go to Europe I mean and that's what's going to happen they, yeah you somebody caught that um, so they can go to Europe very quickly I don't we don't want the United Nations here and there's going to come a time when the powers swing over there and uh, moves off of the out of the United States here because of the weakness that we have shown here in the United States we're losing our position as the global leader you understand when we pulled our military out of Afghanistan and left our citizens there, who does that? I'm not a, I, I, I was never in the military, but I know from playing football games you wouldn't do something like that. I mean, that's just, who would do that? Well, uh, we, and then leave all of your military implements, billions and billions of dollars of Humvees and guns and bombs just for them guys, the, the Taliban and all them to come in and take over. Wh who would do that? Oh, well, we probably ought to go back in and try to get some citizens out after you've already pulled the military out. Well, do you think China is, wasn't watching that? You think Russia wasn't watching that? You think Iran wasn't watching that? I promise you they were. And they're saying, under Donald Trump, we're not going to invade Ukraine, but as soon as Joe Biden gets in, here they go. Russia goes right into Ukraine because what's he going to do to us? Look at what happened in Afghanistan. So all of these things are happening right now. It certainly, I mean, I would, it, it's highly likely uh, that the Antichrist certainly is alive, and uh, but I don't think his name is Nancy Pelosi. 
okay <laughs> anyway i'm sorry at yeah. the at the rapture will there be people saved after the rapture yeah so um it appears that there will be um because all the bible says in um Romans chapter 11 verse 25 and 26 that all of Israel will be saved when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in so when the if, in, if you read the book of Zechariah chapter 12, 13 and 14 that's concerning all three of those chapters are devoted to the battle of Armageddon the Bible says in Zechariah 14 that he will come back plant his feet on the Mount of Olives and that Israel will come out to see the conquering king they've been waiting for and the Bible says that they're going to see look and see the scars in his hands and they're going to say they're going to recognize he was Jesus, and they, they're going to say, "Where'd you get those scars in your hands?" And he's going to say, "These are those with which I got in the house of my friends." And they're going to recognize Jesus was in fact the Messiah. And the Bible says in Romans eleven twenty five and twenty six, when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, all of Israel is going to be saved. The, the rapture has already happened at that point. See, yeah. Then will there be another plan of salvation? So, what's the plan of salvation into? the millennial reign I don't know the answer to that Jesus said except a man's born again can enter or see the kingdom of God so it's got to either be born again water plus. and spirit I'm sorry water and spirit no absolutely B born again like we know it they would have to be uh, no man shall enter or see the kingdom of God except you've been born again period Jesus said it I believe it so the key is who gets to live into the millennial reign? That's one of the questions. The Jews will. The Bible says that they will be uh, burying the implements of war for months and months and months, burying people for months and months and months and years uh, into the millennial reign. However, the other people, the Bible says that there will be people that live into the millennial reign as mortals. In Daniel chapter 7, it talks about nations... The, the, uh, what's left of the nations that come against Israel to battle. It's talking about when the God of heaven comes back, the ancient of days comes back to establish his kingdom here on the earth. It says, as per the rest of the nations, the beasts or nations, that their dominion is taken away because the Bible says when it, um, the Lord comes back, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. The Bible says in Daniel 7, their dominion is taken away, but their lives are prolonged for a season and a time into the millennial reign. However, if you look in Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares, at the time of the harvest, you understand the parable of the wheat and the tares, there was a, a, a field sown of wheat and tares. The tares were like weeds or whatever. Anyway, the, the reaper said, well, should we go in and tear the tares up? And the Lord said, no, don't go tear the tares up because you're going to pull up the wheat as well. Wait until the time of the harvest, not the harvests, plural, the harvest, singular. Wait until the time of the harvest. Then we'll pull them up both together. The wheat will go into the storehouse and the tares will be cast into the fire. So it does appear, Revelation 19, 20 tells us that the Antichrist and the false prophet will both be cast into the lake of fire at the time of the second coming. So it appears that there will be humans that are cast into the lake of fire at that time. So who gets to live into the millennial reign? We talked about this today. The only specific answer, I know the Jews will, the, the Jews that are left that have made it the, two, the Bible says two thirds of the Jews two thirds of Israel is going to be slain however who are the other mortals the rest of these nations which is talked about in Daniel 7 the Bible says that um, there is a precedence if you go back in the Old Testament when the Israelites come out of Egyptian bondage they go through the wilderness Joshua is getting ready to take them into the promised land the Bible says the Lord said only those 19 years old and down will be allowed to go in the rest of them, they're going to be, they, because of their unbelief and murmuring and complaining, they're going to die off out in the wilderness. And so could there be an age of accountability in the future? There's about 2 billion people on the earth right now, 19 years old and down. So there's certainly a, enough people to populate the earth during that time. But can I prove that conclusively? No, I cannot. All I can say is, is that the rapture is going to happen before very long. And to make the rapture, you have to be born again of the water and the spirit it, that's the only way to make it and so everybody in here you say I've, I've actually had people I, that's a great question because I've had people I had a guy tell me one time and I said yeah it, it appears there will be the Bible says that a, um, a sinner during Isaiah 65 
that a sinner dying at 100 years old will be considered but a child. So it says a sinner, but most of the world will follow after Jesus. The Bible says the knowledge of the Lord will fill the earth. Um, so it appears that people will be saved during that time. But um, I had a guy tell me, well, hey, if people can be saved during that, I'll just wait till then to get saved. I had a guy tell me that. And I thought, that's crazy. You're going to have to make it through the Third World War, which is coming. You would have to make it through the, the, the Great Tribulation. You'd have to make it through the Battle of Armageddon. You'd have to make it through all that, which is basically playing Russian roulette with your soul. And I talked to my father. I told my father-in-law that. He said, Dave, it's a heart thing. He said, if they won't get ready on this side, they won't get ready on the other side. And I'm like, Irvin Baxter, I love you, man. I wish you were still here. But he's, it's a heart thing condition. If somebody, if, if you don't have it in your heart to get ready, I don't care what you go through. The Bible says after world, this has always puzzled me. I can't fathom this. The Bible says after World War III, when one third of the world's population was destroyed, that men still repented not of their sins. And the Bible says in Revelation 16, at the vials of the wrath of God, when the vials of the wrath of God are being poured out, that the Bible says, again, men repented not of their sins. And I'm like, what in the world? It's a heart condition. My father-in-law told me years ago, he said, Dave, because I started soul winning and, and I was, it was my, right in the beginning when I started teaching Bible study, started winning souls, and I got frustrated at some of my people that I was trying to disciple. Why are they doing this? And da, da, da. And some people just didn't want it. And I said, I talked to my father-in-law, and he said, Dave, he said, I had to realize years ago that there are some people that are just bound and determined they're going to go to hell, and there's nothing you're going to do to stop it. And I said, I'm getting sick to my stomach. And he said, I had to realize that. He said, I was spending years, years and years and years working on people who didn't want it, and there was fish that were begging for it out here. And so he said, I had to realize I can't spend the rest of my life trying to convert somebody who doesn't want it. And so that's soul winning 101. I'm trying to convert everybody, though. I'm, I'm, I, and, and he was, too. But he said, I, you know, there's sometimes you just got to say, I'll, I'll help you if you want help, but I'm going to go help all these that do. And so um, it's, it's soul winning. And so anyway, be born again. If you're in this church, if you're sitting here right now and you've not repented and been baptized in Jesus' name, been filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to do that tonight because you've got to be born again. And so very, very critical. Uh, man, I, I wondered if I opened this thing up, would, would I ever get it back? Uh, great questions. So here's what we'll do. Uh, you got anything you need to do before we dismiss tonight? It's 623 or you want to keep going? You tell me. You're the boss. Go. Right. Okay. Um, no, and I'll tell you why. I understand that a lot of people say it's the Prince of Rome, so it's going to be the false prophet of the Pope. But I'll tell you why here, because, and I'll give you a scriptural answer. If you go jump over to Daniel, verse eleven, or Daniel chapter eleven. I'm sorry. So Daniel chapter eleven, from verse twenty on, is concerning the Antichrist and his kingdom. Daniel eleven, from twenty, verse twenty on down through the rest of the chapter is concerning the Antichrist and his kingdom. And when you go down to um, verse 22, Daniel eleven twenty-two, 22, and with arms of a flood, they shall be overthrown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. So the Antichrist, yeah, so the Antichrist, the, the Bible calls him the prince of the covenant. Then if you walk on down, the Bible says that um, this is verse 31, Daniel eleven thirty-one. 31. The Bible says in, in Daniel 9, 27, if you continue to read on down through there, the Bible says that um, he will cause a, a, the, the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Well, the Bible says in here, Daniel eleven thirty-one, 31, and arms shall stand on his part. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, shall take away the daily sacrifice, and shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. All of that is referring to the Antichrist and his kingdom. That's exactly the characteristics of the guy in Daniel 9.27. Okay? So it's not the false prophet. Uh, it is the Antichrist himself. Yes. Yes, sir. I got a question. Okay. Can you in the back hear him? Okay. We'll make Mike. this our final question. 
Final question, make it loud. Stand up and yell at everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Just make sure they can hear you. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe I maybe I should have not said to yell cuz Go ahead. Okay, so my question is, so the mark of the beast is similar to the global reward currency, correct? Is that what Okay, now run that by me really a little bit slower. So you said the mark of the beast is similar to the global reward currency well, that's a precursor. Be put in place. Yeah, that could be it's a precursor. precursor. So do you think that the less developed countries that are like not really affected, mm -hmm. like that still use their own currency, that still use like yeah. uh, cash systems and not cashless? Yeah. I know in America we're transferring yeah. to mainly cashless, but like in certain countries in Latin America and Africa, we're not. So do you think that they'll be less affected by the mark of the beast, yeah. similar to how you said in America we wouldn't be as affected? Right. So the, the underdeveloped nations are going to be just as affected because guess what? They're starting with them because they know because they're underdeveloped that they can't resist. So what happened is, I'll give you this and then we'll let you go. The, it's already being tested. There are war-torn refugees that have... The, the ones I'm going to refer to are the ones that had to flee Syria during the Syrian civil war. They went down into Jordan, and they're in huge camps down there. They're still there, believe it or not. They haven't been able to go back yet. Many of them. There were hundreds of thousands of them. They went into huge camps in Jordan, and they said, now that you've come down here, ID 2020 by the United Nations tested their system, and what it did, when they come into these camps, they said, you don't need your cash here. Many of them had no paperwork to prove who they were or what, so they give them their own digital identity. And they had commissaries, uh, which is like a little grocery store or something in the middle of these big camps. There were several of them. And they would make these people go in, put their groceries up. They would give them a voucher. You got $1,000 a month to live here. We'll give you room and board, and you, you, know, you can go to get groceries if you need something for a baby or whatever. Anyway, they put the stuff up on the counter. And I've got pictures of them doing retinal scans. And it, they're with their uh, retinal, retinal, everybody's retina is different. So they were doing retinal scans. I've got articles telling me that it queried their account through United Nations databases and it went back and it allowed them to purchase. I mean, instantaneously. Yes, you do have enough money to purchase that. Your thing's paid for on your voucher. And so the United Nations was giving these people the ability to buy and sell. The world government. The United Nations is the seat of world government in the earth today. These people were war-torn refugees. They had no money. They, were, they, they, they hit the ground. When the, when the Syrian civil war started and ISIS started going up through there and all these different things, they, these people hit the ground running and ended up in these big camps down there. Well, they're doing the same thing to people in Africa and South, in South America. A lot of these underdeveloped nations where they're making people who, and I've got, I can document all this. I've written articles on it. <clears throat> They were making people that would come out of the brush. They live out in the woods. They would come in for a bowl of rice and maybe uh, some, some medicine for uh, every day, and then they would go back. They were making them get digital ID cards. And some of these people had no clothes on. They come in barefooted, and they were saying, my bowl of rice. And they would say, well, sir, you've got to sign up for your national ID card over here to get any kind of a government subsidy, medicine, schooling for their children to be able to travel a bowl of rice, anything. No, nope, got to come in with your digital. Most of these people had no cards, no, no clothes. And so they would make them carry this crazy national ID card in. Totally underdeveloped nations, the poorest nations on earth. They started with them because those people had no means of resistance. We're going to push this on you. There's nothing you can do. So, no, those people would be the first ones that fall in line. Um, they know that the United States is going to be ones that we've actually got laws in nine states here in the United States that, that the employers cannot mandate that their people put chips under their skins to work there, under their skin to work there. Nine states have laws passed against that. So the United States is going to be the resistance, and they know it. That's why they're trying to push socialism and take over our economy with socialistic principles right now. And Joe Biden's, Joe Biden's in complete alliance with all of that, you understand. He's into all of it, and so there are governors you got to have the right governor right now because the United States is being segregated, but it's not race lines anymore, and it's not uh, economic lines and things like that. It's are you conservative, and are you, do you want the truth, and you want to have the, the American experience to continue, or do you want to end it? Do you want socialism and communism here, and are you pro-abortion and LGBTQ and all this other? America's being separated right now. That's what's happening, and so I'm watching it, and, um, and I'm watching this world government, and I'm watching the... the 
digital currencies and I'm watching everything. Uh, all of this stuff is prophetic. The Most of the major news stories, almost every major news story on the planet right now is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And God knew. You say, well, how, how in the world did John and Daniel and all of them knew that? God knows the end from the beginning. He's already seen all this stuff play out. God knew this timeline before I ever put it together. And he said, okay, John, Daniel, here's what's going to happen. Zechariah, Isaiah, all you guys, you write all this stuff. And then John and uh, I'm, I, Jesus, am going to talk about that while I'm here a little bit. And the Apostle Paul's going to talk about it. And that's how all this stuff's playing out perfectly is because God's already seen this stuff play out. He's eternal. He's all the way in back of us. He never was created. And get this, stretch your mind. He's all the way ahead of us already. And so God, that's why if you're going to have us, the Bible says, what do we do? Where's a place of safety? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. And so I'm trusting God. One of the main questions that I get is, uh, I had, I've had many, many people call me. Dave, I've got tons of cash. Uh, I've got $250,000. I just retired. I got, what, what can I do to set myself up for the end time? I'm like, trust God. Yeah, but I know, Dave, but I want you to give me a stock tip. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't have a good enough stock tip to help you. Stocks are like this, especially right now. And so I don't have, even if I had a good stock tip for you, I don't have the, something to help you all the way through the end time. I don't know what it's going to, that's like saying, what's the lottery number going to be seven years from now? There, there's no way. But if you trust God, you will never go wrong. And so I know that. And so, um, all right, you guys, uh, tomorrow night, it's going to be the same thing. We'll have a little bit more time and a little bit more freedom. I know you guys got to go to jobs and all kinds of stuff in the morning. Do I need to do anything before I dismiss? Okay. I almost just said you're dismissed, but um, let's all stand. I want to have a word of prayer with you. Because the fact of the matter is, that's why I wanted to start this with get rid of your fear and go into evangelism mode. The Bible says, during the time of the Antichrist, this is Daniel 11, 32 and 33, they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. The church has a great commission. The commission doesn't stop if the great tribulation starts. It is evangelism, evangelism, evangelism. You say, well, a lot of people, you know, they, I, I've had them talk and say, well, I'm trying to find the will of God in my life. Trying to find the will of God in your life. Start winning souls. That's the will of God in your life. You say, but I, I might be a pastor. Start winning souls. I might be a music leader. Start winning souls. I might be uh, the head usher. Start winning souls. No matter what, start teaching Bible study. Start winning souls. And once you start moving, God can lead and guide you. And I know sometimes you need to stand still and, and you know talk to the Lord and let the Lord speak to you and things like that. But I'm telling you, if you'll get involved in winning souls, God will lead and guide you into stuff. I am sorry. I, I know why I married you now. My wife come up and said, the envelopes. So very, very important. Um, here's what we're going to do. I do need to take up the envelopes because of this Bible study is going to be starting here before very long. But it's very important that you guys understand no fear evangelism 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 win souls start teaching bible studies grow the church my job on this earth is to be an ambassador for jesus christ and grow the church grow the church every way i can talk to everybody i can grow the church you say but what what happens is fear will paralyze you i mean paralyze you Fear will put you in a jail cell in your mind to where you just want to throw the covers up over your head. I can't even get out of bed today. I don't want to face the world. Forget that. The Antichrist needs to be worried about us. I'm not worried about him. The church is moving straight forward. God's moving all around the world. People are being saved. People are being healed. Deliverance. And so I want to be involved in that. So evangelize. Okay. So really quick, let's have these. Uh, you want to just give it on the way out? Let's do that. Okay. So if you've got an envelope you need to turn in, Give it, their guys will be standing back there with the buckets and they can give it to you. Let's say a word of prayer and dismissal tonight. If you'll pray with me. Lord, I love you. I worship you. Thank you so much, God, for your many blessings, all that you've done. I thank you for your word. Truly a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway, God. I thank you because I know, Lord, that if I put my hope and faith and trust in you, I can make it through anything. God, my, the safest.